Hello, this is Mrs. Ross, and this is a tutorial on the fingerprint lab. So we've read through this in class, the all of this stuff. Um, and then these are the three different types of fingerprints. And this is the national fingerprint distribution pattern. So uh, using the data above this part we did in class, and the hypothesis should have been done in class as well. So I'm going to skip all of that. Uh, you were given a fingerprint, um, uh, I guess, ink pad. Uh, so you should have all of your different fingers here, fingerprints. And then you need to name whether or not they are a whirl or a loop or an arch down here. Uh, so that's for your right hand and then for your left hand. Um, so you'll put the number that you find of the loops, whirls, and arches here. And then you'll take the totals of each, divide by 10 for percentage. So you'll get your percentages here. Um, this is all stuff that you can do on your own. And then the last question is, how do your prints compare to the national average? So once you have your percents here, go back to this table or this uh, chart and compare. Uh, do you have 70% loops? You don't? Okay, so what's the difference? Um, and kind of see where you fit in the national average. And then here, what you're going to do, it says now that you know your uh, now that you know your classmates' fingerprint patterns, let's look at how the patterns are distributed in the classroom population. So this is the whole class. Share your pattern count with the class so your teacher can count them up. And you'll do that on the you'll see the uh, the poster on the board, and you'll just write you know how many arches, how many all of that. So. Uh, and what we'll get is we'll get total fingers with loops, total fingers with whirls, total fingers with arches, and total fingerprints total. And then we'll figure out our percentage. This is something we will do in class. Uh, you'll answer what is the most common fingerprint type in your class. And then it says take your classroom percentage data and graph it. You are going to graph this data, this data right here very much the same way as this graph. So it's going to be a bar graph with three bars. Um, so it says label the X and Y axis. What type of uh, graph should you use? A bar graph and Y, uh, because we're comparing data, the graph title would be, um, let's see, fingerprint pattern distribution in our class. You'll have loop pattern, world pattern, arch pattern on the X axis. You'll have zero to 100% on the Y axis. Um, and you'll go ahead and do your graph here. Once you finish that, then we have more questions. Using your graph, what is the ratio of fingerprint patterns within your classroom that are loop to world to arch? So to get loop to world to arch, the ratio, I would do loop to world to arch, these three. Um, uh, and that would go right there. It says, does your class graph resemble the national population. So you'd look at this graph that you made and compare it to this graph and see, is it similar? Is it different? How is it different? So that's what the how is. Number three says, how would you get your graph and fingerprint patterns to compare to that of another class? How would you predict? So um, we're doing the seventh grade class. We only have eight students. What if we did like the graduating class, which has 19 students? Do you think that it would look more or less like the national average? And how could you test this prediction? Uh, number four says, if you could do this activity over, how might you improve your data so your results would be more reliable? Um, there's lots of different ways to have more reliable results. Uh, expanding your data set or expanding your sample set of them. Um, and then maybe double checking each other's fingerprints. Like you may say it's an arch, but I think it looks like a whirl. Let's go back and double check that. Uh, having some sort of uh, accountability would be helpful too. Number five says there are several ways for obtaining fingerprints from a crime scene. Iodine fuming, dusting, cyanoacrylate fu fuming. Why do you think it must be necessary to use different fingerprint methods at crime scenes? So think about how difficult it was for you to get a fingerprint and then think about trying to lift prints off of different things um, and think why, why should we use more than just one method? If you had a clone, do you think they would have the same fingerprints as you? So that's a yes or no question. 
Would they be exactly the same? Yes or no question. And then you need to answer why you think that. So number seven, there's no number six apparently. Number seven um, is really kind of a what do you think? Uh, so you, you know, any answer is really good. And then number eight says, ask your family to do this activity and look at their patterns. Explain what the data shows for familial inheritance. You do not need to do number eight. Um, we're, we're, I'm not sending home ink kits with everybody. Uh, but once you get all of that completed, you'll need to turn that in. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day.